When you see the title of this lesson, you may be asking, what in the world is a red herring? Well, a herring is a kind of fish, but in a mystery story, a red herring has nothing to do with fish. A red herring is a terrific mystery term. What it is, is a false clue that mystery writers put into their stories on purpose to mislead and misdirect their readers, either to make the guilty person seem innocent or to make innocent people seem guilty. And I've mentioned previously that part of our job as mystery writers is to mess with our readers. We want them to believe things that they shouldn't. And one of the best ways to accomplish this task of misleading readers is to use red herrings. When I wrote Chase Against Time, one of my favorite parts of the experience was coming up with a bunch of red herrings to take my readers for a ride. One example happened when Chase is waiting for Amy Simmons in the hallway during PE. Coach Turner walks by carrying a big box to his car. Now right away, readers think that the cello is in that box, but it's not. That is a red herring meant to make an innocent person, Coach Turner, seem like the culprit. And when I read Chase Against Time out loud to my students, there's always a look on their face like they absolutely believe that the cello is hidden in that box, and that tells me that that is a good red herring. Because earlier in this story, Coach Turner makes a negative comment about the music program, so that clue about his negative comment, combined with him carrying a big box, makes people think that he did it. And that's what we want to do as a mystery writer. We want to make every suspect believable, and red herrings help us do that. Another example happens when Mr. Andrews tells Chase to investigate Mrs. Washington. Chase is skeptical. He doesn't think that she did it, but the principal tells Chase that the music teacher could have done it because she's been under so much pressure lately. And then Chase talks to Mrs. Washington, and she says those exact same words. She says, well, I have been under quite a bit of pressure recently. So that's another red herring, because the words she says match up to the words that Principal Andrews told Chase, and that makes readers think that she really could have done it. That's another red herring to make an innocent person seem guilty. Now, there are other times when I use red herrings to make the Principal Andrews seem innocent. At the beginning of the story, for example, when he comes into the auditorium during rehearsal, he seems very well-meaning. He seems very concerned that the music program is going to get cut. He compliments Mrs. Washington. And at that moment, since at the beginning of the book, you're thinking, wow, he's a pretty nice guy. He really cares about the kids at his school. He really cares about music. But all of that was a red herring meant to make him seem innocent when he is guilty. Now, as is the case when you're hiding your clues, something I mentioned in a previous video, you can also sometimes plan in advance how you want to include red herrings, but sometimes you don't really plan it in advance. You simply keep the idea of a red herring in your mind when you're writing your chapters, and when a good opportunity surfaces, then you try to take advantage of that. So on the handout, I left you some space on the bottom of that page. You can use these lines to write down some ideas you have about how you can put red herrings in the story. And of course, you can also look at your chart that I keep referring you back to. You can look at the clues, you can look at the motives, and you can start to think, hmm, what are some ways that I can make the innocent people seem guilty? What are some ways that I can make the guilty person seem innocent? And you can write it on the chart, you can write it on the lines, again, if you're able to plan it in advance. Sometimes you'll come up with some ideas, sometimes you may not. Or when you start drafting, anytime you're writing a clue or anytime you're putting important information in your mystery, maybe you'll have an idea right on the spot about how you can come up with a red herring to fool your reader, to mislead your reader, because that's a very enjoyable part of writing a mystery.